Hi guys, in this video we are going to talk about SEM, Structural Equations Modeling. So what is SEM? SEM is a mix of two things, a structural model, also known as path analysis. In econometrics, it is known as simultaneous equations, and it can also be thought of as an extension of multiple regressions where the dependent variables, the y's, can also appear on the right-hand side of the equations. And second, a measurement model, which is basically a CFA, a confirmatory factor analysis, and it's a way to measure latent variables using observed variables. Now, the terminology can be a bit confusing, and there's quite a mess. Some will refer to a structural model without latent variables as SCM, while some will refer to SCM with latent variables as path analysis. While path analysis did come before SCM and didn't include latent variables originally, in my opinion, you can use the terms interchangeably. SEM is more or less equivalent to path analysis, and it's more or less equivalent to simultaneous equations. The path refers to the path diagram, the arrows. The simultaneous equations refer to the algebraic or matrix notation. Making some of the variables latent complicates things, but the overall framework is the same. Now, the main source of analysis in SEM is the data covariance matrix, with one exception, which I won't go into in this video, which is partial least squares SEM or PLS SEM. Here's a diagram showing the two main components of SEM, a measurement model, basically CFA, and a structural model, basically extended multiple regression. Let's start with the measurement model. This is basically CFA. If you don't know what CFA is, I suggest you check my last video, EFA versus CFA, where I explain about it, and I link it to this video. The path diagram looks like this. We have latent factors as green ovals that manifest via observed variables in blue rectangles. And we have the uniqueness, the epsilons, which can also be thought of as noise. The correlation between variables are presented in double head arrows. The simultaneous equations in matrix form will be written like this. For simplicity, we're going to assume X is already centered and change the notation to X equal lambda X times C plus epsilon. So C instead of F and lambda subscript X instead of L. The implied covariance structure is thus the following, where phi is the covariance matrix of latent variables. How do we estimate the parameters? We have a few parameters, lambda X, phi, theta epsilon, and we wish to estimate them from the implied covariance structure given here. As explained in the previous video, we can either use maximum likelihood by assuming normality or least squares, either the unweighted or the weighted version. In both cases, there are usually no closed form solutions, but rather the solutions are numerical, that is using gradient descent or Newton Raphson, etc. The second part of SEM is the structural model. Here's a path diagram, which represents one possible structural model. We have X2 affecting Y1, X2 and Y1 affecting Y2, and X1, Y1, and Y2 affecting Y3. You can write this diagram in matrix notation like this, y equal b times y plus gamma times x plus zeta. Notice that the arrows in the diagram correspond to the regression coefficients. The arrows between y's are the betas here, and the arrows from the x's to the y's are the gamma. An important distinction here is between exogenous and endogenous variables. The x's, the exogenous variables, are variables whose causes lie outside the model. The y's, the endogenous variables, are variables whose causes lie, at least partially, in the model. If we develop the equations a bit, we can get a reduced form where the endogenous variables are expressed only in terms of the exogenous. Notice that for now, we only have observable variables, that is, rectangles. If we assume some basic assumptions about the underlying model that generated our data, we can derive the implied covariance matrix. For the y's with the y's, for the x's with the x's, we will denote the covariance matrix by phi. This is appropriate as in the next step, the x's here will become factors. And for the x's with the y's, the terms in red cancel because of the assumptions we made. The joint covariance of the y-x vector is thus this half scary matrix. And like in CFA, we will use maximum likelihood or least squares to estimate the coefficients of the model. Now, SEM is putting both of these models together. An example of a path diagram is the following. Notice that we have here a structural model between latent variables denoted by eta for the endogenous and xi for the exogenous, so the symbols make some sense. 
They are taking the place of the y's and the x's in the structural model from before, and we use Greek letters to denote that they are now latent factors and not observed variables. In addition to the structural model, we have a measurement model where the latent variables are manifested by the observed variables. Know that now we have two distinctions between variables, exogenous versus endogenous and latent versus observable. Also note that this is just a simplified example of SCM. It could also be that in the structural model, observed variables affect latent variables and vice versa. So we have eight parameter matrices, four for the coefficients and four for the covariances. Here you can see the matrix form of the same path diagram that is shown on the right. With some more hairy math, we can derive the implied covariance matrix for the y-x vector. You can pause the video to go over this yourself if you feel the need to. The joint covariance of the y-x vector is thus this full scary matrix. And just like before, we will use maximum likelihood or least squares to estimate the coefficients of the model. In this slide, I want to show the development of the implied covariance matrix. We can see that the complexity rises from a simple measurement model, aka CFA, to a structural model, aka path analysis, or simultaneous equations, to a full SCM model, which combines both of the previous models. A big issue to take note of is that of causality. These models were called in the past causal models, and a big misconception is that SCM can establish causality. It cannot. It relies on the causal assumptions given by the researcher, i.e. the structural arrows or lack of arrows, and if the model doesn't fit the data, then it casts doubt on the model validity. But fitting the data does not prove the causal assumptions, it just makes them more plausible. In the words of Bolin and Pearl, lest there be any doubt, SEM does not aim to establish causal relations from associations alone. Remember that in SEM, we are only analyzing the covariance or correlation matrix, and correlation does not imply causation. Here's an example that proves it. For the same covariance matrix, numerous models or structures exist that fit the data perfectly. Here I show three possible ones. For more information, check chapter three of Boland's book, Structural Equations with Latent Variables. Now, there are additional topics which I won't cover in this video, but just briefly mention. So like CFA, there's the issue of identifiability. We want to have one solution and not many different and contradictory solutions for the coefficients. There are also ways to get confidence intervals over our coefficients estimates, either asymptotic ones or by using bootstrapping techniques. There are tests to tell the overall goodness of fit and to compare different models. There are ways to test mediator variables or mediator effects, distinct between direct and indirect effects, and test whether a specific effect is significant. There is also something called multi-level SCM, also known as mixed or hierarchical model, where the observations come in clusters. And finally, there's also the ability to do SEM using partial least squares. But that's all for this video. I hope it gave you a good overview of SEM and that you enjoyed it. See you in the next one.